Hey everybody, Adam here with Hometown Acres. Welcome back. Today we're gonna to be taking a closer look at something that's been bothering me on this mini excavator that we just bought since the day we got it. And also you guys are gonna to get to see everybody's favorite addition to the channel. Neighbor Doug's gonna be giving us a hand with this. Let me show you what the problem is. So if you guys have been following our excavator journey since we bought this about three or four weeks ago, we've been kind of complaining about it in multiple different videos that the thumb that is on this machine, now granted we bought this machine used, so this was not a factory thumb on here, <laughs> but uh, we've noticed pretty quickly, even when we went to go look at it, that that thumb is about six inches too long. And what we were doing, Doug, if you want to get the tape measure out and show them from that pivot pin right there to the end of the bucket teeth, is about 38 inches and if you measure from that pivot pin out to the end of the teeth on the thumb it's about 44 inches so we're of the mindset that that thumb is about six inches too long for this machine and we'll tell you we'll show you a couple of reasons why that's a problem one thing to add there and when you first originally looked at this machine the first thing i noticed when we curled this the dipper in towards the boom was the tips of this thumb actually will come in contact with this guard and if you look at the guard it was already bent Some, somebody's bought, hit that yeah, before before you bought the machine and uh so when we brought this in we can literally come in and, and touch that and you can see a couple marks on here now at the end where the teeth have touched that and that's just a very very bad scenario to have where your teeth can come in contact with this shove this into your cylinder score your cylinder on there and, and really cause you a, a nightmare with tearing seals and stuff so and i know we talked about that when we bought it and you said it's just one of those things you're going to have to be careful of well trust me i've been extremely careful and delicate with this machine as i'm learning and there's been a couple times where i have tapped the end of the teeth on that cylinder guard i haven't banged it in there to the point that it actually you know broke the guard and got into the, the cylinder at all but as careful as you can be, there's still situations where you're trying to curl in real quick to get around a tree or something, and you just you can't pay attention all the time. But we're gonna go ahead and fire the machine up. I'm gonna have Doug get in, and we're gonna show you a couple different situations where that thumb being six inches too long is really cumbersome for trying to pick up logs and firewood, which is mainly what we're using this machine for. Doug's gonna look like he doesn't know what he's doing here because I've got uh, cat controls going. He's used to deer controls. So as he curls that in, you can see those teeth on the thumb are about six inches too long. Ideally, you'd want the teeth on the thumb to be mating up with the end of the teeth on the bucket. So now, if we go ahead and pretend that you're picking up a log, we'll show you where that becomes a problem. So right there, you'd wanna just be pinching something up off the ground. So you got the thumb on the ground and the bucket isn't gonna quite get underneath that log. Now, if we do it the other way, and we have the bucket teeth on the ground, and you try to curl that up into the bucket, you're gonna be taking a lot of mud and dirt with that log. So really, yeah, if you look here, look how far that sunk down into the ground, which isn't ideal. So what you want, again, is those teeth to mate up very well so you can pluck stuff up off the ground. Now we're gonna show you how easy you can hit the cylinder guard with that thumb. All right, so the stick is all the way in, the bucket is all the way curled, so the bucket cannot come in contact with that uh, cylinder. You got about a half inch there, you're touching it right there. So yeah, that's, that's what we're gonna try to fix too. Try to idiot-proof this machine a little bit more. So if this, if this thumb was down like that, and you curled this thing. Oh yeah, you'd, you. you'd wreck that cylinder. Yeah. So all it would take is not paying attention. All right, so we've kind of figured out that we think six inches is our number that we want to take out of the body of this thumb. So if we're going from 44 inches as the length of it now down to 38, we're gonna go ahead and put 38 on this cylinder or the, the pin right here. And that is the main pin uh, because there's a hydraulic coupler on here and it's the pin for the thumb. So that is the main pivot point right there. So we're gonna put 38 inches on there and then rotate that down 
and make sure that the end of the tape measure will not come in contact with the boom cylinder once we're done with this. And by taking out the six inches, we want to take it out of the main body here. So somewhere from around here to here, we want to take six inches out of that and remarry it back together again. And that six inches is where we're going to show you what Adam was talking about, how it corrects the problem. Yep. So if we put 38 inches right at that pivot point there, and then we go ahead and pretend like that's the new thumb and rotate that down, that's gonna line up perfectly with the end of those teeth and it's not gonna come in contact with that boom cylinder anymore. There's a little split pin here that holds this cylinder pin in. So we need to pop this split pin out and then push the pin out the gotcha. side of the side of the pin. And there's a hole under here that allows you to get in there to push that pin out. Right. I don't want to pop it all the way out if I don't have to, but let's see. Getting it back in there would be a pain. Yeah, it's just easier to leave it in there. There we go, we're clear of it. So, here's where we need to swing this over and lay it down on this to take the weight off. Because as soon as I pop that pin out, it's going to swing away. Yep. Now swing your thumb down. Good. A little more? Yeah, a little bit more. Right there. Again, I don't want to push the pin all the way out. So I brought a piece of pipe over here for one to allow us to pound this pin through to get it out. But when I pound that pin out, I want to leave this. Once we get the thumb out of the way, leave this in here so it holds everything together for the couple days that it's going to sit while we do the fabrication. Yep. So I took pictures of all this before, so we know where these shims will all go. Hold that pin. And just watch for any of those rings to come out. back in there and that's just to hold this thing so when the hydraulic pressure bleeds off and whatnot it doesn't allow that piece to come apart on us right so now all we have to do is deal with this put these back on where they were put these back on this side what I don't want it to do is come apart here and here because there's a rubber o-ring seal on this side that helps for when you grease it. Okay. And I don't know if you can see it from there, but down here oh, you can yeah, see, I it. see it. Yep. so we're over here at Doug's it looks like he's in the middle of another welding project so we caught him at the right time he's got all the equipment out what are you working on Doug 
Well, I got that uh, trailer there. You see, it's a little lawn cart that I use, and what I did was I bought that used off a buddy of mine, and it was an old uh, central tractor trailer. Yeah. And it was let's see, four feet wide by six feet long, and it works great for pulling behind the side by side. And what I did was I added these bent sides and the front to it, and I added the uh, polypropylene sheeting on the base or the floor of it. And uh, what that allows me to do is I can throw dirt and everything in there. The floor was an expanded metal floor. Right. So now it allows me to throw dirt in there and carry it around the yard and do whatever I want and all that. So I. So it was it was something somebody else was going to throw out, and you've turned it into a, a really nice trailer here. It was pretty much junk, and I put wider tires on it. Um, doesn't tear up a lawn. Yeah, so it doesn't sink down and and all that. So just kind of make it something that I can... I can go up in the woods and haul a load of wood home, or I can pick up sticks and trees and branches and do whatever. But we're here today to, I yeah. guess, get the thumb going. Yeah, let's go check out the thumb. So what's the plan here, Doug? Well, we want to take out six inches of this thing. Um, and that's the odd thing. You know, we got we got to remove six inches. Most people want six inches, but we're, <laughs> we're taking six out of it. So... I've got to measure across here somewhere to get the same exact dimension because when you take that out and shorten it up, you want this lip here and this lip here to marry back together pretty right. much even so they're flush. And the same with the bottom side. And I want to cut it with, down inside of each tooth. So when we take six inches out of this thing, I'm going to try to get it between a tooth here and a tooth here get it down in the valley there right so then when we bring it back together you've got a valley and a valley meeting up that makes sense so we want to do that i've got to remove this on both sides this it's a welded on emblem i've got to remove that so i can put a square on here because i need to come up here square and up here square transfer that all the way across the, the base of this in two places right and then do it again on the other side and it all has to be even because when when i weld this back together you don't want it tipping out like that and you know have a crooked thumb running around on you and right look kind of goofy so kind of like sawing through a block of wood a 24 inch block of wood with a 20 inch bar you got to make sure you line yeah. your cut up yeah. There you go. There we go. Right, we'll clean this up, get it uh, ground down smooth so there's nothing to interfere when we're running <clears throat> straight edges on that. All right, so now we, uh, looking at this, we want to cut it in the valleys of these teeth. So anybody, if you add, there's six to 12, so that's six inches. So when we cut this section out, it's gonna bring it all together and our, our low point in the valley and our low point in the valley here will marry back together and it'll keep just about the same gap or the spacing between each tooth once we bring it back together so knowing that where those are we've got to make it exactly the same on the other side so it isn't welded back up out of square so what we did was we take a mark off of the the pivot pin on the thumb and we came down here straight off of that and measured so we're about 15 and 3 16 and 21 and 3 16 so when we flip it over we'll measure from the pin and get those two points and then run our square lines off of those as well all right so now we've gone and, and we've taken those measurements off of this pin and just marked them on here on each side and then took a square and run it up off of those and now what we want to do is, is hopefully in the camera you can see these lines down here from the other side so this is where we want to check and make sure that so that line matches up with that line and we're square all the way across and the same with this one we check that and we're square all the way across there so we know 
that when we cut the six inches out of this side and this side, they're exactly the same from that, the end of that pin mark. And then we've got to transfer those lines down through the middle of the plate and we'll have to plasma cut that out to, right. to get that squared up. So I'm going to use the, uh, the portable Milwaukee bandsaw and I really actually like using this on a lot of stuff. Uh, it can be a lot more accurate with it when we cut this. So, and it's got a five inch throat and we're about four and a half inches across here. So should be able to just sail it down through there, all four spots, and then go in and plasma out the other pieces and good to go. Well, Doug went ahead and finished this up last night without me. I had to get back home for uh, dinner with the wife and kids, but he got the final coat of paint on it, got it all welded up, got his One Eye Customs logo put on there for us. And this thing looks awesome. So, Doug, probably some people who aren't familiar with metalworking are going to ask, um, why did you have to chamfer all of the edges down around so much? Uh, one thing is, is because of the metal here, this is three quarter inch thick, and down on this plate was half inch thick. So when you go to weld it, and I don't know if you can see up here, I relieved, basically you take a 45 degree angle on each side of the cut. And you do it on both sides or, or wherever you're going to be welding. And what that allows is when that metal is that thick, it allows you to get a good strong weld down deep into that thickness of steel. If I did just a small little chamfer out front here and, and ran one bead down across it, then you're only welded the two pieces together at the very tip. 
I wanted to get the weld down in towards the center of the thickness of, of these plates. So that's why I chamfered it on both sides. And you actually did multiple beads. You built a couple beads on top of each yeah, other, right? Yeah, yeah. I ran three passes on this side, three passes on the inside of that three quarter inch thick. And then on the half inch, I ran two passes on each side. Okay. And, and what that does is it just adds that much more strength. And you got to imagine how much uh, pressure is on the end of this thumb when you're squeezing on something. So you don't want this thing to split apart. Now, it may still split apart. I don't know. But. <laughs> For some additional strength, Doug also took from that six inch piece that we cut out of this and cut the teeth off of that and welded those across uh, that seam there just to give some extra strength. Well, we got it back on here. Let's go ahead and check to see if we solved all of our problems. The thumb hitting the boom, the thumb mating up with the bucket teeth, and then we're actually going to put it to work and try to pick up a couple logs here and see how it turns out. All right, moment of truth. job what do you think I'm pretty happy with it well there's one other thing we got to try and I got to go get you a small little log to see how it feels to pick oh it up. yeah that's true see how that fine motor movement works yeah now we're gonna do the real test and see if he can pick up these small things before he couldn't do it because the thumb always got dug into the ground thumb all the way down first right there now bring it into your thumb so now we're going to give it the, the small rock test and before he couldn't pick up one of these small rocks individually because that thumb would go down and knock all the others out of the way. And there you go. That's the way that thumb should have been on the machine originally. Uh, in contacts with Workbrow, their engineers said that it was the correct size for that machine but with it able to contact the boom and uh, goes into the ground about six inches before the the uh, bucket was anywhere near it made it just about impossible and also aggravating to try and use that thumb on that machine so a little bit of measuring a little bit of thinking we were able to cut it down and weld it back together Anyways, guys, I think that's going to about wrap this one up. I want to give a huge, huge, huge thank you to neighbor Doug. I don't know too many people that would take this amount of time to do something for somebody else. Uh, I know I condensed the entire project down to about three minutes worth of footage of cutting, grinding, and welding. 
but there was a whole lot of measuring and a lot more grinding than what I showed in the video. We probably worked on this three days worth in the evenings to get this thumb to work the way that it does. Like I said, an immense amount of time measuring, making sure that everything was going to work the way that it does now. Anyway, if you guys enjoyed this one, do me a big favor and help me thank neighbor Doug down in the comments. Give us a big thumbs up, click that subscribe button, and we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.